You got Libya rattling, Japan melting, nuclear just smoldering, oil drilling chilling, the perfect storm for the not so perfect energy alternatives. To the guy who says this isn't a plan, it's a plot. Chris Horner is a senior fellow at the Competitive Enterprise Institute, and he joins me right now. And Chris, I guess um, all of these new technologies are the ones being favored, uh, certainly by the administration, by the Democrats who dominate the Senate, uh, and all the other existing ones be damned. Right. I wouldn't expect this crisis to go to waste, but the problem is the, the president said in a rope line caught on a microphone when someone called on him to kill coal, as he's trying, but also nuclear, he said, my, my people tell me the technology is not there. And of course it's not. He, he calls windmills and solar panels new technology. And it was, it's 120 years old. It's a loser. But that's what they're funneling money to. So we've got a problem. His campaign rhetoric was largely anti-nuclear. His actions as president have been almost exclusively anti-nuclear. And his hints this week uh, from the, uh, the the administration have indicated that obviously practically no new nukes, but that's a lot of our power. It's the bulk of the 50 percent of the coal that he's trying to back out of our system, and you're not going to replace it with windmills and solar panels. He's got a real problem with his base, but we have a real problem with the administration's policies. But their argument has been, if I, if I remember correctly, Chris, the higher these oil prices, gas prices go, the better it looks for these things, even the nonsensical ones. Uh, that's true. That's why he's, he's uh, obviously got the war on coal. You'd be confused, I understand, watching these green group ads. You'd think we drive wind or solar-powered cars or we get electricity from oil. And with a few rare exceptions in Hawaii and Alaska, uh, we don't do any of the latter uh, and none of the former. There's confusion on the policy front here. It's true they're trying to increase the, cr the price of everything that works and also slow walk or kill through the permitting and legal processes. But you still can't get baseload, what our economy runs on, from windmills and solar panels. You can't put windmills up anywhere birds fly or Kennedys live. Solar, of course, obviously has its limitations, but is, is the only thing in the world that makes wind look remotely economic. Electricity doesn't come from the wall. But we've got an administration no, I know. that all really the seems to think that you're greedy. I, I, I don't think anything's out. changing, though, Chris. I, don't, I just don't think all those common sense, matter of fact points you just mentioned, as you always do, matter a hill of beans in this environment with this administration with one well, okay here's the problem when the lights go out politicians have a problem they're very risk averse you won't see the republican nominee giving a full-throated defense of nuclear and the president's counting on that uh, but the coal-fired power plants are expected to start closing in 2014 we need to have a debate about that because of administration policies when lights go out politicians are in real trouble because the citizens are put in grave danger we are richer freer and safer because of abundant energy but the administration has declared war on one thing and it's that it it gives the the masses delusions of adequacy as George Will writes because we can make decisions <laughs> to live the life that we want to live and not that our Betters in the government want us to live. So that's why anything that works is the subject of a war. Practical realities are, are damned. You're right. But we need to have a discussion about when the lights right. are planning to go out because facilities will start closing in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana in 2014. Wow. Chris Warner, thank you, my friend, very much. Thanks, Neil. Meanwhile, all eyes on Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they own it.